Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video aimed at you newer pilots getting into things like iNav and beta flight, specifically focusing on how you set up the radio for that. Now this is something that I cover in my iNav for Beginners 2020 series. If you're new to iNav, go and check that out and watch it all the way through. There's loads of little tips and tricks and things that I do to make sure when I get to the end of my build, they go flawlessly. And I have an entire series called the OpenTX Mixing School that shows how you set these radios up. But I'm aware that lots of people don't have the time to go and watch those series. So this one, I'm condensing it down to show you how to set the radio up and then how to set it up in Configurator. And this one's specifically a shout out to a patron of mine, a gentleman called Jeremy, who this has been uh, part of his struggle getting his first iNav build done. And that's pretty standard the first time you build any system uh, is what we call in the trade a learning experience. So Jeremy, I hope this one helps you out. Let's jump on the bench and first of all, I'll create the model on the radio. Uh, the cool thing is, is once you've created it once, and all you need are the basic four controls, throttle, elevator, aileron, and rudder. And then you also need just another couple of controls, one for arming and one for your three positions for your mode switch. Once you've got that set up and you're happy, then you can just duplicate that model on the radio and use it for all your other iNav builds in the future as well. So the first thing we need to do is to create our model memory on the radio. Now, as I said in the introduction, the easiest way to do this, and the cool thing about iNav is once you've created the model once, you can just copy it to other places. But we'll go through this step by step. I'll show you each of the presses. So if you are new to this, then it'll all make sense. So we're gonna, on this particular radio, this is the Radio Master TX16S. It's slightly different on other ones, but I'll show you on this one. We're gonna press and hold the rocker button, and then we're going to select model select. And here are all the different models. I can select them by rotating this control on the right hand side. And on these more advanced radios, uh, you can actually order them into different um, groupings as well. But we're just gonna create a new one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press and hold the enter key, and we're going to select create model. And at the moment, we only get a couple of options in OpenTX, depending on the radio and the OpenTX version you're using, depends on what you get. Sadly, on this, we don't have an option for a multi-rotor, and there absolutely should be. But the closest one we're gonna have is a plane. Uh, so if you have plane on your radio, select that. And then it's going to basically ask us, do you, do you have a motor? And we're just gonna page through everything. Does it have ailerons? Um, I would just say let's press that let's just say one with a y cable we're just going to tab through no flaps standard config and what we're going to end up with with all the controls uh the main controls on the first four channels there we go yes all is well create the plane hit enter press return to exit and return so there's our new model that we've got so now we've done that let's come out of that uh, press and hold the model uh, button and now we can tab through each of these screens at the top. Now the cool thing is is that we don't need to add an awful lot more to this for iNav to get it ready. We can see here in the mixes screen we have aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder. Uh, your radio might have it in a different order, T, A, E, R, whatever the defaults are. That's not an issue, we can fix that in iNav. The only two extra things we need, we're going to need an uh, mode switch and an arming switch. So we'll add the arming switch first. So with the cursor on channel five, we'll press and hold the enter button and that will take us into the settings for channel five. We can give it a name. So hit enter, press and hold enter, we'll change the lowercase to uppercase. Okay. There we go. I'd always recommend arming your stuff, we'll press uh, exit to get out of that. We'll go and highlight the source. Now we can individually select which of the switches on the top we want, or while this is highlighted and flashing, we just flick the switch that we want, press return, keep pressing return till we get out, and there we are, we're armed. And if you look at the bottom here, as I flick that switch, SG that I switched, you can see the values changing. Next, we're gonna to need to add a mode channel, we're gonna do the same thing. With channel six selected, press and hold enter. Let's give it a name of modes. 
press and hold it to change the lowercase to uppercase and vice versa. Once that's done, press return to go down. Select the source and press enter. And again, we'll just flick the switch that we're interested in. And there we are, we're all set, return out of that. And that is the model ready to go into iNav to set up. Now the cool thing is, is if we just go back to the first bit, I would change the name to something like iNav. Because now, next time I want to create another model, if I just press and hold enter, say model select, there's the iNav that we've just selected and we're, we're playing with it at the moment. If I press and hold enter, I can actually duplicate the model from here and the next iNav model I make, whether it's a wing, a plane, a quadcopter, a hexcopter, whatever it is, I can then use that duplicate model. There it is again, I have two of them now. I would probably change the name of the second one, but now once it's all set up, you don't need to worry about it. However, let's just keep on this one for now. Turn on the computer and I'll show you how to do the final setup bits actually in iNav Configurator. So now we've got the radio set up, uh, we can do all the refinements in the configurator. I have bound this to a receiver, so that receiver is plugged into this computer and I can connect to it and we can do all the usual stuff. Now again, this is not uh, a complete standalone video. If you want to know how to do all the iNav setup piece by piece, please go and watch the iNav for beginner series. There's a link down below but we're assume that you have the uh, receiver connected and you can see it. So here in the receiver tab, as I increase the throttle stick, you can see the throttle stick increasing. Now, what sometimes catches people out is the channel map here is a different. So if it was set to that, let's save and reboot it. When it reboots, what you'll find is that the channel order will appear to be wrong. So as we move things like the throttle on the radio, so if I move the throttle now, the pitch is moving. So all you need to do is just change the channel map, try them one by one, until eventually you get to the point where the throttle is moving the right control and the other controls are all okay as well. So as we're coming back in, now as I move the throttle, uh, by default, it is set to AETR, which is what the defaults are for this radio, but things like Spectrum and uh, have a, a different default. Simple thing is just ch change the channel map until you get it working. Next thing we need to check, we need to push the sticks on the radio to the top right-hand corner, and we should see all the channel values do that, go to their maximum position. When it goes to the bottom left-hand corner on the six, they should go to their minimum position. If they don't, then you need to reverse them in the radio. So let me show you how you do that. So we're gonna press the model menu and we're gonna tab along past the mixes that we were looking at before where we set the extra bits up into the outputs. Now there are loads and loads of different ways that you can actually uh, change the direction of channels, but this is the way I'd recommend that you do it. So say for example, if I just go back one, say it was the elevator that was the wrong way around. The elevator is channel two, would go into the output, select channel two, press enter once, and then tab across until we get to here. And you can see it actually tells you what we're changing here, direction. Click on that once, and now the direction of the elevator in Companion is reversed. However, we want it on the standard way around because that is working. The other thing you'll notice here in Companion is that unfortunately, the middle channel positions aren't spot on. They're supposed to be at 1500 like your is, and these are a little bit out, and that's perfectly normal. So if we need to change the roll, which is the aileron control, which is what the little A is for in the square brackets. So if I just go back here, aileron is channel one. So what I'm gonna do, again, hit enter on the outputs. I'm gonna go across here to where it says sub trim. I'm gonna hit the roll to select that, I'm going to change this number watching the screen in companion until it gets to 1500. When that's right, I'm going to exit out of there. I'm then going to go to channel two and this one is too high. This is the elevator. I'm going to hit enter again, come down here. So selecting sub trim, hit enter. I'm going to reduce this one until it gets down to 1500. Doesn't matter if it's moving around a little bit, that's fine. 
that looks pretty good to me. Let me exit out of that. Now, the only thing, I, other thing I potentially would do while we're in model, I would go down uh, to the bottom of the settings and I would set the, where are we? There we go. Uh, the fail safe type. The radio is going to complain if you don't set this anyway. I would just set that, set that to no pulses when using a flight controller. Uh, that will guarantee that the flight controller will realize something horrible has happened. Um, I would, wouldn't use no pulses if you're not using a flight controller, but this would be my recommendation if you are. Okay, so the other thing we need to check then are the two switches that we've set up. We have the arming switch, so let me flick that. So that's channel five. And channel six is my mode switch. So now what I'll do is go into modes and set those up. So channel five is my arming switch. And we can see that because, see the little blue indicator here, as I move the control on the radio, you can see where it's jumping to. So I maybe want it only to arm in that position, which is way up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this slider so that it brackets that value, click save. Now it won't arm because it's plugged into the computer and we're safe. Next job I want to do then is I want to select the three positions for the mode. So if we go in the receiver tab and flick those, take it out of arm, flick those three different positions, there's channel six. So that'll give me a low, medium and high position. That's fab. So I need to go into modes. And for a new pilot, I'd recommend starting off in angle. So I would have angle as part of it. Middle position uh, horizon can be very good for that. So again, we're just moving the pieces around. The reason I'm not going super close is because these values might change a little bit over time. So we don't want it so that if the values change, it's gonna go outside of this uh, range that I'm setting. Let's click save. And then for when you're really good, we can maybe have the top one as something like a manual mode, or it could be GPS return to home if you wanted it. Uh, but we could have something like manual or acro. There we go. Now to prove that's kind of working, as I flick the switch on the radio, you'll see the modes that are being selected will light up blue. Again, because we're plugged in the computer, we're reasonably safe. So I'm not worried about it. If you're ever doing this on the bench, and the flight controller is installed in the machine, remove the prop, uh, don't try this kind of stuff. Uh, it shouldn't arm, but just word to the wise, it's always better to be safe than sorry. So in the low position, it's angle. Mid position, we have horizon. Top position, if I scroll down, we have manual mode. Have <laughs> beeper set there as well. Let me just get rid of beeper. We don't want that, just hit that button. There we go. So that's how you set it up. Uh, just remember a couple of things. Make sure you have the four main controls. Make sure you have the two extra controls for the mixes. And then just spend a little bit of time. Make sure that they're all moving in the right direction. So that in the receiver tab, when you go to the top right hand corner, they go to their maximum values. Spend a bit of time getting them all to 1500 in the middle value. And then that's how you set your modes up. So they work too. So there we are, that's how easy it is. Isn't too tricky, is it? Uh, again, if you're interested in iNav, uh, do check out the links down below. And if you want to know more about how to do funky things on the radio, then check out the OpenTX Mix School. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.